Hello and welcome to Dance by Serona's Decoding Digital Dentistry online event. Uh, you're joining the last session of day one, the Let's Talk Live Serac Crown in an Hour uh, using Serac to Sera uh, Glass Ceramic. My name is Kasia Jawa and I'll be your host tonight. We are live from Trinity Dental Clinic in Rothwell, Northamptonshire. And joining us tonight is an experienced clinician, um, director and principal, uh, Dr. Alison Simpson. Welcome, Alison. Joining us tonight is also uh, Jack Hannam, who is a CAT-CAM specialist at Dance by Serona. Welcome, Jack. We are filming live tonight uh, in accordance to local government uh, regulations regarding COVID-19. In addition to that, we all tested negative prior to arriving on site tonight. And also we're ensuring highest uh, clinical care to the patient whilst we film. So what can you expect in the next hour and a half? Tonight is your opportunity to visualize CEREC system in a practice and see a real-time demonstration of a single crown workflow with a real patient. You will also be able to learn about the new kit on the block, CEREC to CERA glass ceramic, and see it processed live uh, with a step-by-step -step guide accompanied by live narration. In short, you will be able to witness a fully digital uh, restorative workflow with CEREC system. We will begin with the uh, scan, uh, so digital impression. We'll then go to uh, crown design, crown manufacture, crown finishing in furnace, and then we will place the crown in the patient's mouth, and all of this in one visit. Uh, when the crown is in the milling unit, we'll have a short break, and, and we'll hear from some of our customers who have had a chance to, to try the Serectacera glass ceramic. So stay tuned for when we get to that. If you'd like to ask any questions throughout the event, please use the Q&A function and we'll include your questions at the end of the event in the Q&A section. So without further ado, get the popcorn out, make yourself comfortable and let's hear from Alison about the patient case for tonight's procedure. Alison, over to you. Good evening, I'm Alison and I'd like to introduce you to Adeline, who is my nurse this evening, and Phil, who is our patient. What we'll be doing is a Serac to Sera crown on the lower left five. And earlier today, we did uh, the prep, um, chose the shade and placed the block into the prime mill. And you'll be able to see that footage now. As you can see, the patient is walking in, being welcomed by our reception staff and then shown to the consultation room. When we're ready, the patient will be brought up to the surgery to begin the procedure. During the prep, we need to think about a few key steps. We want to make sure that there's an occlusal clearance of minimum one millimeter with the bane and adhesive restoration. The taper on the walls ideally would need to be four to eight degrees. We would like to have a shoulder or a chamfer margin. We've already selected the shade and the block. As you can see, the prime mill is able to scan the QR code on the block to recognize the size and the shade. This saves time as we don't have to manually enter these details. Now we're going to head back to the live clinic to see the scan take place. Great. Now we're at the scan stage. What we need to do first of all is just to retract the soft tissue using this Optrigate, which can be a little bit fiddly sometimes to get in. However, with a bit of experience, it does get an awful lot easier. So we just pop that in. With this being a lower restoration, we will start the scan on the lower. Feel okay, Phil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Just a little bit of air to dry the prep and remove any excess saliva just with a small ejector. And then we start the scanning process. So we want to make sure that the lower is highlighted in blue. And then we use our foot to actually start the scan on the prime scan. My nurse is able to look at the scan 
to see if there's any areas that I need to fill in. Excellent. You just want to make sure that you're getting the contact points of each area. Okay, Adeline, if you could check there for me. So as you can see, it is touch screen and there's just a small amount on the distal of the three. You just want to fill that in. And a little bit just on the mesial of that six. Okay, and again. Tie a little bit there. Excellent, just check again. Great. Lovely. Okay, now we're going to move on to the upper. And I do find sometimes the upper is a little bit easier to scan. For the opposing arch, we really just need the occlusal aspect. However, the more information you give to the software, the better, because the better the proposal will be and therefore the easier our designing will be. Excellent, well done. And you can see how it tidies up the scan as we go along. Super. You just get a little bit more on that four. Excellent, just check then that for me. A little bit more here. Excellent. Great. Now we go on to the buckle. So you're just going to have to ask your patient to bite together for me there, Phil. Lovely. And just keep nice and still. That's fantastic. And then what will happen is we will get a green tick once the software is happy that it's been able to pop those two arches together. Great. Lovely. Okay. Excellent. Right, so that is the scanning stage complete. I'm just going to hand you back to Kasia. Thank you, Alison. So after the uh, digital impression is completed, so the scanning phase is finished, it's time to design the crown. And this is where typically Alison would ask the patient to go to the consultation room and to take time to relax, whilst Alison focuses on uh, the design phase. So this is really gives Alison time to truly focus on the detailed work uh, she will be doing in this part of the workflow. So as the patient relaxes and Alison is starting the design phase, Jack, why don't you tell us about what Alison will be doing in the next phase? Yeah, absolutely. So currently up until now, mm -hmm. um, what we've had essentially is we've uh, acquired the equivalent of thousands and thousands of images per second. So uh, every software like CEREC essentially has to process all of these raw images. It has to process the blurry images out. Uh, it chooses what to keep, essentially to keep the file size down, but also turn it into what we call a workable digital model. So we always have to process this data and this will take a couple of minutes to do. Like you've already said, this can be done while the patient's walking back to the waiting room. It only takes a couple of minutes at most. What will happen after then, uh, essentially, is the, the software, the CEREC software, will automatically identify a few different things. So one of them is the axis of the model, so it can determine which way is up, essentially, uh, and whereabouts that restoration is actually going to sit. Um, and we can see that on screen happening there. That's just the processing and the, the thinking behind the software happening right now. Um, once this happens, you'll see along the uh, phases you can see at the top there, of which we have five, uh, we're now moving into what we call this model stage. And this is where we have the final resolution, the full textures are all processed. Um, and there are a few steps that are, that are mostly done automatically for us, but Alison is kind of going to go through the steps anyway to show us, uh, in a worst case scenario, if we have to set them ourselves, uh, what we could actually do. And we can see this is the model axis stage. Um, and we're essentially just making sure that jaw is roughly in line uh, with what, where we can see that uh, sort of uh, arch shape is on the right hand side. And also making sure that falls in line with the occlusal plane. Um, and we want to get it roughly right 
um, and then we'll click OK. And once it's set, we can then move forwards. So again, this is done automatically in most cases, as long as we're scanning past the midline. Um, but if not, we can come in and we can either do this ourselves or just verify it. Once we've clicked OK, we can then do several different things. Uh, one of them is we can just verify the insertion axis. We can see that's been done automatically for us. There's rarely a need for us to change this. Uh, it just determines essentially how we insert the crown. Um, but now, once we've verified that, we're then going to look at what we call uh, the margination stage. And this is where we plot a line of where that crown margin is essentially going to sit. So we can see in this specific case, uh, we've been you know, quite lucky in the sense that we have actually got the software to propose it automatically for us. Uh, and in most cases where it does this, it's maybe about 80 to 90% of the way there. It's always a good idea for us to actually verify. We always need to come in uh, and potentially just review it and possibly make some changes to it as Alison is doing here. And it's a very simple process. We're essentially just uh, taking this line, we're double clicking on it and we're changing the position of it uh, and just allowing the software to make those changes for us. Um, it's really important that we get this stage right, obviously, because this is going to determine where the crown margins come to. Um, if we don't identify where the preparation margins are accurately, then how could we expect the crown to fit properly afterwards um, or meet our sort of functional needs? Uh, but now once we've done this, we can see we're now able to move into the design phase along the top. You can see we've moved forwards. And what's happened is the software has taken essentially 35 years worth of user diagnostics and feedback um, and designed uh, what you could say is pretty much a crown fit to go ahead and be milled. But of course, this is CEREC and you do have complete control, complete clinical control over the shape and the design of the crown. Um, and we can see here, Alison demonstrating some of the tools we can utilize. Uh, one such tool here is the uh, shaper tool. So this is as simple as essentially taking the mouse or taking your finger over certain areas of the crown. You can see highlight in orange there. And as you move the mouse or your finger inwards or outwards, it then shapes the tooth accordingly, shapes the crown accordingly. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can then see Alison's clicked onto what we call the form tools. Uh, and this tool set has what we call an add, smooth and remove tool. And this just allows us to uh, self-explanatory really, add, smooth or remove bits of material. Um, um, the reason Alison is using this is she's just adding some little bits of characterization um, into the shape of the crown, just to make it look even more lifelike. Um, and it's worth mentioning here as well, there is a little bit of a space which we're actually not looking to fill um, through the purpose of this crown. We're actually intentionally leaving a little space here uh, for future purposes with sure smile aligners. Uh, which the patient has expressed some interest in. So we're just making sure we maintain a little bit of room there for when we do have this short smile aligner treatment. So Alison's just continuing with a little bit of um, characterization here, just utilizing the remove tool. Um, and that really is just allowing uh, Alison to really hone in on some of these um, fissures and some of these lines that we can see in the crown. But now she's happy with the crown uh, we then move into the manufacture stage. And this essentially uh, is where we're positioning the, the crown inside of the Tessera block. Um, so we can see sort of a ghosted image of the, the block and this is exactly where it's gonna be milled from in the block. That's obviously the cool thing about CAD CAM um, is what we put in the screen is essentially what we get out of the mill. Um, and we can see Alison looks like she's ready to uh, hit start now, which is fantastic. And what's going to happen is this is now going to automatically go over to the prime mill, uh, which is done by Serona's latest milling and grinding unit. Um, we can see that the block has already been inserted, um, which is great because in the past, uh, what we'd have to do at this stage is we would insert the block um, and then what we call the pre-touch process would then kick in. And that would take about a minute and a half for the burrs and the motors inside of the machine just to verify that we have selected the right size block and the right material. Um, one of the amazing features with the prime mill is that we're able to do all of this in advance. So what's nice about that is it does save about a minute and a half out of the procedure. So 
you can see automatically the once the, the file has actually been transferred over to the mill, rather than doing the pre-touch process, we're instantly starting with the burrs and the water running. And in a second, that will just start to cut away that ceramic. Thank you, Jack. Um, so whilst we wait for the uh, crown to mill, uh, we're going to have a quick chat with Alison and Jack. Uh, Alison just joined us in the studio. Uh, so let's, uh, let's have a chat then. Um, Alison, we saw, uh, we saw earlier your patient going into the consultation room to relax. Uh, so what would you say um, offering single visit treatment to your patient um, what impact has it had on their experience of overall the, the treatment in your clinic? Um, our patients love the experience because it means they only need to come once, which means they only need to be numbed up once. They don't need to have the traditional impressions and they don't need to have that sort of two, three week wait for the temporary crown. They, love, they also love the experience of sort of sitting in the consultation room because most of these people are pretty busy. They have, you know, 10, 15 minutes in the chair for the prep, then down into the consultation room where they can sit, relax, read, get on with some work or just have peace and quiet. So for us, our uh, patients certainly, to be truthful, do enjoy the single day sort of crowns. Fantastic. And how do they react when you tell them they don't have to have the traditional, conventional impression taken? They love that and they love actually being able to see the design of the crown or even actually just actually see their teeth because most of these people will never have seen their teeth on a sort of 3D sort of screen before and it's a great way actually to educate and communicate so therefore there's no issues whenever you say that they do need to have certain treatments because they can physically see you know why they need to have such things and to be truthful most of them are looking at the adjacent teeth to see what else that they can have because they are just so impressed with it. So would you say, based on what you've just said, uh, would you say that uh, digital technology uh, like CEREC, um, would, it, would it change people's perception of a visit to a dentist? Would you think that uh, it could actually excite patients about their, den uh, their dental um, health and oral health? Yes, absolutely. And a lot of them are really proud that they've had these crimes. And I know that I've had lots of recommendations from my patients to other people because they are so impressed with being able to get, you know, a crime, you know, within one visit. So yeah, it helps us, but ultimately it, it helps the patient, which is really what we're here for, is to give them that better experience. That's lovely. Great. Thank you. Um, Jack, question for you. We saw earlier the CEREC software 5.2 version. Mm. Given that this is the uh, most recent release of the software, could you tell us what are the key features uh, that's been changed in this version that uh, customers could expect to see after they've upgraded to that latest um, version? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, CEREC software 5.2 is actually the largest software update we've had since the launch of the Prime Scan in 2019. Um, and in general just really reflects the commitment that Dentsmeisterona puts into uh, the future development of the um, equipment. So we know our scanners have a good lifespan ahead of them, they're constantly being optimised uh, through software updates and that is really what 5.2 represents. The biggest feature I would say people will notice, people who are scanning regularly, is the fact that under the hood essentially we've really optimised this scanning strategy that happens with the camera. So we're now officially able to claim that we've got up to two times the scanning speeds that we had with the prior software version, which is absolutely insane because anybody that has ever picked up a prime scan knows how fast it is. Um, but for us to say we're now up to twice as fast um, is absolutely insane. Um, and on top of that, I mean, it, it does mean that yes, we are able to scan even faster. Um, we know that from our feedback and even ourselves as CEREC uh, representatives, we, we can definitely feel the difference. But the way in which the camera actually sticks to the arch that's been scanned uh, is a night and day difference. That's definitely the biggest thing, but overall, there's been a lot of under the hood tweaks. So the software actually loads and opens cases much faster. Um, we've actually got a reduction in the file size of the scans. So we're actually taking up less storage, which means more scans on your hard drive, essentially. Um, and lots of other features. I would say one really uh, big thing as well uh, is the fact that we're now officially validated for uh, full arch implant superstructures with Atlantis, which is essentially the first for an intraoral scanner. Uh, and that's all down to the accuracy. 
a couple of years people have spent um, you know, testing it, it's now officially validated with 5.2, so it's a proper workflow, which is incredibly exciting. Well, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's great. So, so Jack, what is making PrimeScan this fast, this accurate? What's, what's, behind, what's inside that camera? Can you tell us more about the technology inside uh, PrimeScan? There's lots. I mean, the camera <laughs> is basically almost a computer in itself. It okay. actually does have an onboard processor, which essentially is trimming out any blurry images before they even get to the PC. So it just helps the load, it helps the acquisition become super fast. But really what is majorly different in comparison to other scanners is the Prime Scanner is completely unique in terms of the way that it actually captures images. It's a completely new patented way of acquiring scan data. So we don't use the regular um, triangulation. We use a process called high frequency contrast analysis. Essentially comparing it to a different scanner is, is almost pointless because they are completely different technologies, completely new next generation version of a scanner. Wow, fantastic. That's great. Um, Alison, just a question for you. Uh, just going back to um, the CEREC system in your practice, but also what it means to you but, and to patients. So uh, what, um, what treatments could be completed in a single visit? Going back to the single visit um, uh, uh, treatments that you provide to your patients, what, what type of treatments could you achieve in a single visit? Well, we use our scanner literally all day, every day. We use it for our new patients, we use it even for existing patients because it's a great way to actually show the people what's there. Uh, we're using it to actually export the STL to be able to print our whitening trays and we're also able to uh, do inlays, onlays, hopefully uh, I've used it for bridges, used it for our implant crown, so there are lots and lots of indications and also veneers. And have you seen an uptake uh, in treatment since you invested in CEREG? Yes, I think with our patients, I think they can see the commitment that we have made. Um, the, we've made it sort of financially in the capital investment, but we've also made it in our training and the whole team is involved with that training and the whole journey for the patient, which I think ultimately they, they see how dedicated we are. So therefore they want to come to a clinic that shows that level of experience and investment with the technology that is available. Fantastic. Um, that's great. Uh, and Jack, mm -hmm. one more question for you. Yeah. Um, what other materials can you uh, mill in Primal? I know we've got Cerec to Sarah uh, yeah. currently in the, in the Primal. Uh, but what else, what else can you uh, uh, mill in, in Primal? <clears throat> Basically, you have a complete material range. You're not at all limited to one specific material or one specific ma manufacturer. That's always been one of the amazing things with CEREC is we are not at all um, limited to dense polystyrene materials. Uh, we can use everything from um, feldspathic materials, um, lithium desilicate materials, uh, and even zirconia, which you know we're seeing an increasing demand for. Um, just because of the insane strength properties that zirconia holds. But on top of that, you know, zirconia is usually quite a long process uh, when it's made in a lab. You know, it takes quite a while, there's the milling of it, and then it usually takes a few hours to actually fire. Um, when we're talking about a prime mill, we have by far the fastest way of milling zirconia with the new super fast mode, uh, which can do a zirconia crown in about five minutes, which is absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, complete range of materials with, with uh, the prime mill. Well, that's, that's great. Um, so thank you very much, both. both. Um, and so whilst, whilst we uh, wait the final minutes um, of the milling uh, process, we will now have a short break and we'll play short videos uh, demonstrating CEREC system and CEREC to CERA. And this includes uh, customer feedback uh, on the new material. And shortly after this, we'll be back to see the end of the milling process, so see you shortly.
for single visit, indirect restorations. Three is your winning combination. Achieve unprecedented efficiency with simplified shade selection and up to 44% faster total processing time. Achieve beautiful natural results for any restoration location. Deliver results that last with strength that far exceeds any ordinary glass ceramic. For all your indirect restorations, you need speed, strength, and aesthetics. And only one material offers leading performance for all three. Seric Tessera CAD CAM Blocks. The latest available technology is now your winning combination. Your trifecta for single visit success. Contact your Dent Supply Serona sales representative or visit dentsupplysorona.com. Single visit dentistry has changed our practice. In the seven years that I've been using the CEREC system, we've seen the practice grow and grow and grow. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is providing a better outcome for our patients. The four minute, 30 second firing time of CEREC to CERA is really unique. Some of the other high strength materials can take 15, 20, maybe even 40 minutes to fully process in the oven. Versus four minutes and 30 seconds with Sarek to Sarah, there's times where I almost forget that it's in the oven because it's in and out so quickly. The workflow behind Sarek to Sarah is a lot different than other Sarek materials on the market. We don't need additional materials, no paste, no putties, no pegs. It really speeds the process up, but it also cuts down on the clutter in the office. With Tessera, we're able to simply spray glaze the crown, put it in the oven for four minutes and 30 seconds, and suddenly we have a gorgeous, lifelike recreation of the patient's natural tooth. And that's really where the, the workflow stands out, is that this is something that's entirely delegatable to a team member, which frees the doctor up to have a little more free time with patients, or possibly even get off their feet for a few minutes and, and relax before the finishing the procedure. Our patients are busy people and life tends to get in the way of dentistry sometimes. And by providing this service in one concise short visit, that's increased our case acceptance and it's generated a lot more growth and revenue in our practice. I see CEREC to Sarah as my go-to material in the practice. It brings all of the efficiency and speed that I need as a clinician and all of the strength and aesthetics that my patients need in their mouth. Welcome back. We are now at the end of the milling process and Alison is going to take the, uh, the block, uh, the, the crown out of the prime mill um, and continue with the processing. Uh, and Jack is going to uh, take us through the next steps of the procedure. Okay, so what we have here is the crown finished. We're just going to check everything's good. And what we're going to do is just give it a rinse just under the water, okay? That's just really to rinse off anything that was in the prime mill. Then we'll give that a dry. And then the next stage, you can see it's still got the sprue attached, so we need to really remove this. So we just use this little file here. And just very carefully remove the sprue. This material, you can really feel the strength in it because it does take just a little bit to get it off. There we go. Excellent. Right, so I just change then to this stone. And what I'm doing here is just smoothing away what's left of this spree. So again, just turn the drill on just with a got a straight hand piece here see that nice finger rest and then we'll just remove our sprue just want to get that nice and flush and smooth okay 
And that's why it's quite good just to make sure that we're putting this on the, this is on the lingual aspect, however, even the buckle, we've got enough different drills here to smooth down so you would not be aware of that spray. So the light, great. Excellent. Right, so I'm happy with that. Next stage, just to just secure it while we're doing the staining and glazing, we just use this silicone and we want to pop it into really the fitting surface of the crown. And it is purely just to make the next stage a little bit easier. So that's nice and secure. Be quite generous with the amount of silicone. And then I do like a little bit of staining on my crowns. So you just pop the stain there and then you just add in the glaze. You really, really do not need much at all. Trying to mix it together. And then we just want to add a little bit of depth to this crown. Now, in my experience, sometimes you're best just not telling the patients about the staining because if you go and say that you've stained their crown, they're not terribly happy about that and then you end up milling another one without the staining. However, I do feel it makes the crowns a lot more real. There's lots of other stains. I'm just using one of the light brown ones. There's, um, if we were doing incisors, you do actually have a blue one which gives a translucency. We also have white which is good to give then a uh, Sort of if there's any fluorosis but also the white's quite nice on molars to sort of look as if that the fissures are a lot deeper especially you pop them on the um, the tips of each of the cusps now that sounds quite complicated however i was quite intimidated when i started with staining and glazing but there is a process to it and if you follow that process then it really is straightforward and you do not need to be an artist to be able to perform well in that task. Okay, I just need to shake the spray because we're going to use this spray glaze. Great, and what we're going to do now is just give this a nice light covering. You want to sort of get a nice sort of frosted look on it. You want to check it. I'm going to give it about 10 seconds and then we do another one. So again, Give that a shake and then again just another spray just to make sure that that is nice and even. So I've got a question for you, Alison. Yeah. Do we need to do this in absolutely every single case uh, when we're doing a crown? Do we always have to stay in place? No, sometimes there's no need at all. And I suppose it depends where you're putting it in the mouth. If you wanted to give a bit more character, then absolutely. However, you are looking for a bit more perfection, then there's no need. Okay, so the next stage then is to pop it into our speed fire. So we select the case. We select the glazing. And then this opens up the door. And what we have here is sort of like a wedding cake arrangement. And then we have on top, we have the honeycomb and then we have the firing pad. What you want to do is just pop the crown into right on the middle and you want to just use the contact points nice and gently lift it off pop it into the center and then all we're doing here is just really pressing play now at the moment it's saying 10 minutes 45 however because we had preheated it takes it right down to four and a half to five minutes so the time this actually closes it will take it right down to four and a half minutes which really is rather quick okay so that is the speed fire starting and i shall hand you back to kasha thank you alison uh, so now we have four and a half minutes uh, uh, for the crown to to center in the oven uh, and so let's have a chat about the new exciting uh, Serra material. So Jack, what can you tell us about Serra? So Serra is an incredibly exciting material. Um, we've known about this material for a long time and we waited a long time for it to come to market. Uh, it's actually only recently launched in the last sort of two or three weeks in the UK. 
Um, really, the, the reason it's so amazing is, you know, it was created out of a need um, and it's a need that people have had when using CEREC um, and doing any sort of chest eye dentistry for a long time. Um, and what that need is, is essentially most dentists will, will either use pretty much one block but then have to keep in this completely separate material for different indications. So generally speaking, you tend to find some materials are fantastic for posterior work because that they're really, really strong. Aesthetics, you know, where they're maybe not so important, you know, they're good for posterior work. But then, you know, if you were to use those anteriorly, they don't look quite as natural, they don't look quite as aesthetic. So Tessera was created out of a need for a block that can cover everything. So it truly is designed as a block for every indication. So that's for anterior and posterior. Uh, and the way in which we're able to achieve that is through what we call the trifecta, and that's of speed, aesthetics, and strength. So in terms of strength, we're looking at more than 700 megapascals uh, in strength, which is you know, far more than most lithium desilicates on the market. That's not a million miles away from zirconia. So it is incredibly strong for a glass ceramic block. So that makes it fit for use posterior as well as anterior. But on top of that, the aesthetics are absolutely phenomenal. <clears throat> the chameleon effect of it really blends in well. It looks very, very natural. Even when we're not you know, truly staining like Alison did there and we're just applying the simple overglaze uh, using the, the Cerex spray, um, it still looks really aesthetic. But again, and maybe you could put this maybe slightly lower than the other two, but clinically it still is very important, is the speed. Because, you know, we often forget that what sometimes puts people off some type of cerebral workflows is the time that it can take. Because if we are wanting to use, you know, other lithium desilicates out there, we do have generally around a 15 to 20 minute milling cycle. And then we have to couple that with an actual crystallization process, which happens in the furnace. And that can take anywhere between 15 to 20 to 25 minutes. Um, even some of the slower furnaces out there can do it in 30 minutes, which is a lot extra when we're considering this is supposed to be a same day, single visit treatment. Where Tessera is so amazing is that it only takes, when coupled with a speed fire, four and a half minutes to actually uh, crystallize, um, which is absolutely phenomenal because, you know, four and a half minutes is actually quicker than possibly a lot of dentists out there could actually polish a crown by hand in that time. Uh, and obviously we're seeing all the benefits from that added heat, which obviously increases the strength, but then also increases the, the life, uh, the, way, the way that it looks so natural because all of the glass and the virgilite inside, the virgilite crystal, which is unique to this, they all melt and they look very, very lifelike. That's great. Um, so Jack, how does, this is what the audience probably would want to see. So how does this block compare to, uh, to other materials on the market and perhaps uh, to the one which most people in the audience would be familiar with? So we can actually see, just to, sorry to interrupt you for a second okay. there, Kasia, it looks like the uh, speed fire is almost finished already. So in the time it took us to do one or two questions, uh, the entire process is actually done and the, the Tessera block is now slowly coming out of the furnace. Um, so yeah, in terms of how this compares to other lithium desilicates, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of comparisons. One obviously is the time, it's much, much quicker. Um, one of the nice benefits, you know, I'd like to add is that people can be very, you know, off put by the whole staining and glazing process. Although it is, as we heard from Alison, very easy to learn. What can add an extra challenge is when we're working with other similar lithium desilicate blocks is they don't actually start out as a tooth colored shade. They commonly start out purple, which, you know, if we're looking to stain and glaze on that, that's very, very difficult. One, to actually get the shade match right. But how do we know if we're putting enough of the blue accents on it? How do we know if we're putting enough of the, you know, the more brown tints to it? So it can be very difficult. And we can see there just on the screen, uh, the Tessera crown is now done. And um, we are gonna leave this just for a couple of minutes to cool down, that's completely normal. Um, so we've got a few time for a few more questions while that's that happens. That's great. <laughs> so uh, let's just uh, go straight into uh, what is available for customers uh, to start using Tessera? So um, now Tessera, with it being an incredibly easy to use material, it doesn't take a lot uh, of learning if you're familiar with other blocks, but we do highly recommend that you check out the Cerec Tessera starter kit. Um, this contains absolutely everything that you would need to get going because there are a few unique items that you'll need to process the material because it is a very unique material. 
Um, and those specific uh, items will be, for example, for the speed fire, we need this new honeycomb tray along with the dense fly serona firing pads and specifically the glazes, which need to be the dense fly serona glazes. So we do have the option in the starter kit of having the paint on glazes. This is like, for example, when we're like applying a nail varnish, but we're doing it for a crown. So we do have the option. Um, but we can also get this with a spray glaze as you saw Alison use. Um, it is a, a nice kit, you do get a good selection of shades. Um, we get the silicon to hold the crown um, as Alison showed before. We get some nice diamond coated tweezers um, and we also get a really, really nice um, staining uh, brush which has got two different fine tips um, and this can actually be magnetically removed um, and swapped with the other tip that we have here. So a very, very nice addition to the kit. It's a good way to get introduced into using the material. That's great. Thank you, Jack. Uh, so whilst the crown is, um, is cooling down, uh, it is now time to bring the patient back um, and then prepare him for the, the fitting of the final crown. Um, so let's hand back over to Alison uh, and for, for her to take us through the next steps. Alison, over to you. Okay, so now we've got our crown. As you can see, Phil, this is the crown. So what we want to do is to pop you back out, get you comfortable, try this in and make sure that you're happy with how the crown looks. And I will make sure I'm happy with the fit. Okay, right, let's get you nice and comfortable. Great, okay, feel okay, yeah? yeah. Right, I'm just going to pop some cotton wool in here. Pop some at the top, bottom, and then we're just going to give this a little wash, okay? Excellent. Lovely, thank you. And a little bit of air. Right, so let's get our crown. Excellent. It's nice and wide. Lovely. Great. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to check our margins and check the fit. Okay, margins look good. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so what we're going to do, Phil, I'm just going to bring you forward so that you can have a look at the crown in situ mm -hmm. and then if you're happy then I'm happy to cement okay, okay. All right so let's just pop you forward and then if you just have a little look I'll take your glasses from you just so you can see you. with your eyes you okay oh yeah Okay, so you can see it matches in nicely and it has that lovely chameleon effect, so it just sort of blends yeah. into the area. Into the whole area, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you happy for us to yeah, cement then? Perfect. Great. Yeah. Lovely. Super. Lovely. Right, let's give you back the glasses. So what I need to do now is actually just to prepare this crown ready for the adhesive bonding. Okay, so I'm just going to take it around the corner because we need to clean the fitting surface. Great, well done. I'll turn off that light while we're around the corner. Okay, so we'll get it ready for the cementing. Great, thank you. All right, so it's going to give it a little wash first of all. Now what I normally do is we cover over the plug hole because the last thing you want is going all that effort and then it's going down the plug hole. So we always cover it over with a cloth. It's going to dry. And then the next stage would be to pop our red etch, which is hydrofluoric 4 to 5% into this. So again, just make sure I've got good hold of that, pop a red etch in, if it comes out, there we go, love light, give you that, thank you Adeline, super, so 
want to make sure it's gone over all of the fitting surface. That's great. Okay, and again, we're going to wash that off. And again, dry. And the next stage would be to put some silane onto the fitting surface and that means that the crown is now ready to be bonded. Great, thank you very much. All right, just pop that into our fitting surface, just make sure it's all covered. Great. And that's in there for about 60 seconds. However, while that's in there for 60 seconds, we need to now prepare the tooth for the crown to be fitted. Right, we'll take that right round again. Super. Right, thank you. Right, so with the tooth, again, I'm just going to get that nice and dry. Give it a wash. Pop some cotton wool in. We'll put the light on, but we'll put it, put it on at half the brightness. Great, so if we could aspirate here, Adeline, that'd be super, thank you. Again, a little bit of water. Bit of air. And then we're going to use our Prime and Bond Active. Well done. Thank you very much. Great. Just pop that over the surface of the prep. Give you that. Just a little bit of an air dry. Maybe smelling some strange smells there, Phil. Now we're going to cure. And then we're going to use Calibra Ceram to bond this in once we've completed this curing stage. Lovely, thank you. So my nurse normally fills the crown. Just get a good hold of this, thank you. Pop this in. That's lovely, and all the uh, margins, just a wee bit more there, just pop it up a wee bit. Great, lovely. Right now, just a little bit of pressure here, Phil, just want to make sure that we're okay. seating this how we need it to seat. There we go. Right now, I just need to take off our excess. Light. Great. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Make sure there's no, that's it. There you go. Let me just check again. Lovely, our margins are all clear, that's great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is cure. Great. It's 
So we're just curing the buckle, the lingual, and the occlusal. And actually with this adhesive, this Calibre Ceram, it actually cures straight away so that you can eat as normal compared to other adhesives on the market, which again is another benefit. Okay, just on the occlusal. And then we'll check our bite once this curing completes. Thank you. Nearly there, Phil. All right, let's check. And then just close together for me. Lovely. And then grind from side to side and open. I can see from the way your bite is there that that's lovely and balanced and as as it is. Does that feel, did that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to, First of all, take an image and then I'm going to set you forward, okay? Uh -huh. Just with our interoral. Lovely. You grab that for me, that's great, thank you. Right, and then I'll just remove our cotton wool, just pop a wee bit of water here. There you go. It's our lower and our upper. Okay, so I'm just going to pop you forward. Here we go. Great. Right, if I take your glasses from you, Phil. Thank you. So you can see in the screen in front, yeah. you've got the before and the after. Yeah. And then I'll let you have a little look so that you can see how it actually looks yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. That's really good, yeah. Excellent. So how did you feel about that experience then, Phil? Yeah, no, that was, uh, that was really good. Um, it looks, looks great, it looks, feels comfortable, and, uh, you know, just one visit. So that's, uh, that's really good. It's ideal for it's a, ideal, a busy yeah. man like you. For someone who's working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you very much. Super. Thank you. Thank you. And um, back to Cassia. Thank you, Alison. What a great result and great to see that the patient is happy with the result. Um, so before we wrap up for today, let's see if there are any questions from the audience. Um, and whilst we wait for Alison to come, to come back to, to us, um, I've got a question for Jack. So uh, Jack, yeah. let's start the Q&A part of this uh, event. Um, so having worked with many uh, CEREC customers, and that's both experienced but also new CEREC customers, um, would you say a restorative workflow, similar to what we, what we witnessed to that tonight, um, is something that a person fairly new to CEREC could achieve? Um, and if so, what, what support could a new CEREC customer um, receive from Densply Serona? Well, to answer your first part, mm -hmm. um, without a doubt, I've not got a shadow of doubt in my mind that pretty much anybody can pick up the CEREC system and start using it for their restorative cases. Uh, in fact, there has never been an easier time to pick the system up because now we have the equipment in the best shape that it's ever been in. The scanner is the fastest it's ever been. It's the easiest it's ever been to use. The milling machine is the fastest it's ever been makes the highest quality restorations it's ever done and the speed fire is now able to go at insane speeds with materials which are complete game changers like Tessera. So absolutely and I've seen many different types of dentists pick up the CEREC system in my experience even the ones that aren't necessarily incredibly digital focused in their personal life um, and with a little bit of training it really doesn't take a lot for them to really get going with the CEREC system and they absolutely love it as well. It really does change people's careers when they pick it up, which is great. So in terms of support to do that, because you know, as easy as it is to use, you, know, you can't really put somebody in front of it without telling them what to do and they expect them to be able to use it. So there does need to be some training. Um, so when people do purchase the CEREC system, they do get a place on the two day CEREC new user course at the Dense Barcelona Academy in Weybridge, Surrey, which can be attended in person or it can be attended virtually. So it's completely up to them, but they do get a space on that free of charge. 
Um, that obviously gets people going, but also, you know, we do offer in-house training alongside um, with Netsus Rona and alongside our, our Cerex suppliers, uh, of which we have a few. Um, so we are available, you know, if people want to do in-house training when they get their systems, um, quite often we tend to do days where after we've installed the equipment, we will sit with the dentist chair side um, and they'll just maybe do a few crown preps in advance or maybe two or three patients and we'll actually do live seric cases there and then so that they can, you know, have their hand held um, while they're doing them essentially. So if they do encounter any sort of niggles when they're, um, you know, new to it, um, we can help them with that. So there's plenty of support out there. Fantastic. Great. Thank you, Jack. And Alison, a question for you. So tonight's uh, event is called uh, Seric Crown in an Hour. Uh, so given what we've seen today, how do you, how would you say uh, tonight compares to your typical CEREC appointment? Um, obviously, except for all the cameras that were following you today, <laughs> tonight. Indeed, no, this would be a regular occurrence in our clinic. And I must admit, whenever I do see the CEREC's booked in, it um, fills me with joy because I do find them really fun. I find them very fulfilling. And um, as I say, it does just, you know, make you look forward to, to working whenever you're working on such cases. Lovely, that's great. Um, and so, Alison, this is always an interesting question for the audience. Uh, what is the return on investment with CEREC? So with CEREC, it is a huge investment outlay. Your capital investment is a lot. However, what I have found is the, like I said before, the fulfillment is huge and it does bring you an awful lot more patients to the clinic because I do feel that these people are seeking out such sort of technology and it's great that we are able to provide that and what I find what our ethos here at Trinity is just to look after the patients and if each patient is happy then really the money will follow so for us you know it has worked really well but also more for as I say, how I feel about my dentistry, it sort of has sort of brought back a bit more enjoyment and um, that I think patients sort of feel that, which then, you know, encourages more to attend. That's great. Uh, and Jack, similar question to you, but from your experience working with um, other CEREC customers, uh, what have you seen in terms of return on investment uh, with the new CEREC users? So when, when, they, when they purchase and how long, how long does it take for, for the CEREC to typically uh, pay for itself? What would you say? Uh, it can really vary. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm lucky enough in the aspect that I've worked with many, many practices on their implementation of CEREC and chairside um, dentistry like this. Um, and in many cases, you know, we've had people who have made a complete success of it. And um, it's really the people that are really keen to start using it, really keen to learn. And those are the people that start using it as soon as they get it. Um, they'll put all the learning in um, and they'll really become pretty much experts in the CEREC workflow. Um, and they really enjoy it. You know, it does transform people's career. You know, I have a really fantastic job in the sense that I have so many dentists that I've worked with that, you know, their careers have completely turned around since they've adopted this. Uh, some of the more successful ones that I've had um, in terms of return on investment uh, would be, you know, we've had people that only five months after having the equipment installed, they've essentially paid for the system itself. And like Alison said, you know, these things aren't necessarily low cost to implement into the practice, but once they are there and you're using it, it can be, you know, provide a return in as little as five months. Um, you know, one such case that, you know, I always highlight because it really is incredible and I think it's a fantastic success story. You know, people think, oh, I have to have a really busy practice, I have to have at least four or so dentists working here to really see a return. And it's not the case at all because, you know, I've worked with a single chair practice with just one dentist there and a hygienist who's there a couple of days a week. Um, they are one such example that paid for their system in less than six months. Um, they're now making so much return on it that he's able to enjoy some of the, the high life in terms of, you know, he's, he's reinvested, some, reinvested some of that money back into, you know, luxury cars, um, which is phenomenal, you know, because it really is not just impacting his work life. He says it's completely added new life into his dentistry, which is great to see. Um, but also from a personal aspect, you know, he's... Yeah, he's taking it up another level, which is insane. Doing well. Yeah, yeah doing very well, yeah. <laughs> That's great, fantastic. Um, Alison, uh, just a question for you. 
Um, you have been trialing our new uh, Serec blog, Serec to Sarah. How would you describe your, uh, your experience so far? Uh, so far I've been really, really impressed with it. The aesthetics you've seen, it's the chameleon effect, it just seems to really blend in. And also the strength, just to know that it is sort of 700 megapascals is, you know, phenomenal. Um, however, what really sort of gets the team sort of inspired to use it is that sort of four and a half minutes firing time and you know once we see that you know we're just like gosh that's amazing and it really has sort of changed our workflow so for us I think we will be sticking with the Sarah to Sarah definitely that's great so you will <laughs> you will be consider or you will be actually switching from yes. your current uh, uh, absolutely portfolio. yes I've been so and patients have equally been as impressed Fantastic. Well, great. it's great to, great to hear. Um, so, uh, Jack, a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, how, what should any t new Tessera users look out for when uh, processing the new material, especially when they're used to processing other materials out yeah. there? It's a great question because, you know, sometimes people do fall into the mistake of thinking that all materials are handled the same. Mm -hmm. And while they may look similar in terms of they both come in block format, you know, they have very different properties and have different requirements. So to be successful with something like Tessera, we want to make sure that absolutely under no circumstances, anything is placed inside uh, the crown itself. So some of the lithium to silicates out there, we fill with a putty and to essentially keep it in place. Um, and as any shrinkage occurs in the firing process, the crystallization process, it prevents any fractures. That's not the case with Tessera at all. Um, although we use the silicon to hold it to aid us when we're actually doing the um, glazing side of things, um, that immediately gets taken off and put onto the honeycomb tray with the firing pad on top. Um, and that way you'll get a perfect crown pretty much every time. So that's definitely something to look out for. Um, something as well to keep in mind is if you are switching over to this material um, or if you are using this material, um, do not use you know, your normal glazes with this. Um, we really need you to stick to the official dense by Serona glazes and it needs to be glazed every time. This isn't a material we can just polish in place. We need to use the official dense by Serona, either the spray glaze or the paint on glaze. So both of those, those are two things to watch out for. In my okay, opinion. <laughs> that's great. That's a really good information. And just one more question for, well, my, one more question around the Tessera, mm -hmm. um, or rather two, one of which is what are the Virgilite crystals in Tessera? Uh, and what, because you mentioned them earlier, and what contribution do they make to microstructure of and physical properties of the material in the whole process? Yeah, so Virgilite is something truly unique to, to Tessera. So no other material has Virgilite inside of it. Um, and simply, it is a crystal structure um, that purely adds strength to the material itself. So that's what gives it that extra boost above what other lithium desilicates have. So it's a lithium desilicate and it's an advanced lithium desilicate reinforced with Virgilite crystals. And that's essentially what it's for, the strength. That's great, thank you. Uh, and just one more question about the Sarah uh, block. Uh, will there be the Sarah bridge or implant block? So uh, for both of those blocks, yeah, we are soon going to be launching the implant block, which is really exciting. So we could now obviously do uh, Sarah crowns mm -hmm. for implants with it uh, that soon. So that will be coming shortly. We haven't got a, a firm release date yet, but I would expect that in the next few months. Uh, and the fantastic news is that we are actually looking at launching a bridge block. I would say that's going to come a little bit later than the implant block, but that that will potentially be coming at some point. It's just in testing at the moment. Okay, interesting. That's great. And and Alison, question for you. Um, what? Well, let's go back to uh, beginning of your journey with Serec. What was the reason uh, for choosing Serec system in the first place instead of other solutions out there? Uh, what I loved about the sort of Serex system is that it all sort of integrated together, it all worked, the workflow was lovely and smooth. Um, however, I think it was because it was um, from Densply Serona, because it is a company that I trust and I do like what they, um, the innovation that they would have and the monies and the, that they would put into sort of their research and development. And I know whenever I buy from such a company that I will get the support 
which you really need with such systems because you could you know have the the best system in the world however if you don't have that support then really it's not going to work well for you so for me i just knew i would get that support that's great um and just a final question uh for alison what advice would you give to someone watching in the audience who might be at the beginning of the uh, career, maybe the digital journey, uh, and they may be looking to invest? Someone who's watching and aspiring to be where you are, you know, uh, an experienced clinician, director, principal, what would you say to anyone looking? Well, I uh, think this sort of system really works well for whatever stage you are in your career. For me, you know, I got it possibly later in my career, but that has worked because it has sort of given me that enthusiasm. Again, uh, for anyone younger, you know, they used to always say that digital dentistry, you know, was the future, but it's not. It's, it's now and you just have to get into it and you have to embrace it. Um, I mean, the only thing that I ever regret doing is not getting into it sooner because I, you know you don't need to wait for the next update because really you just need to get involved and get involved now and I don't think anyone would regret that. That's great, thank you Alison. Uh, so this will conclude the Q&A section. Um, so thank you Alison and thank you to the team at Trinity Dental for your support with the event. Uh, thank you Jack and the team at Dance Place Rona for, um, for their support with this part of the uh, the decoding digital dentistry uh, part of the event and i hope you enjoyed the day one and also um, i hope you join us for day two so that's it for now thank you very much goodbye <laughs>